In the last tutorial, we looked at how to use Prisma and MongoDB in Adonis using the Adonis Prisma package. Like I said in that tutorial, this package does not only come with a Prisma client provider, but also an auth provider, which integrates nicely with the Adonis auth module. So in this tutorial, we'll be looking at how to use the auth provider for authentication in Adonis JS. We will be building on the blog API from the last tutorial, which I have opened here. Like I said, the Prisma Auth provider integrates nicely with the Adonis Auth module. So we need to first install and configure the Auth module. npm install at adonis.js auth at latest. Then we need to configure it. By default, you can either use Lucid or Database as a provider for finding users. But we are not going to be using any of them. But just to fulfill the configuration step, I'm going to select database. And since the application we are working on is an API, I'm going to select API tokens. And the database table name to look up users is going to be user. And we don't want to generate a migration. Since I'm using API tokens, I need to select the provider for storing the API tokens. And by default, the auth module provides two options, which are database or Redis. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be using Redis. That means we need to install the Redis module. While we are here, let's install the Argon package for hashing password. Of course, we also need to configure the Redis module. So we've installed and configured the necessary dependencies. Next, let's create a user model. I'll do that inside the schema.prisma file. So model user. And the user model is going to have a couple of fields, starting with the user ID. Then we have name, which will be a string. Email, which will also be a string and it's going to be unique. Then we have password, which will also be a string. Then we also need to add a remember me token field, though it's not applicable for what we are building, that is the API we are building, but the Adonis Prisma package requires it. Remember me token, which will be a string as well, and it can be nullable. So now we have the user model. Remember we are building a blog and we want to be able to associate user with blog posts. So we need to define the relationship between the user model and the post model. And the relationship is going to be a one-to-many relationship such that a user can create many posts and a post can belong to a user. So we'll start by defining a post property which will be an array of the post model. You notice we are getting an error here. That is, we need to define the opposite of the relationship on the post model. We can either head over to the post model and create the relationship ourselves, or save this file and let it be created for me automatically. As you can see, this is because I have installed the Prisma VS Code extension. I'm going to edit it a bit to fit what I want. This is going to be lowercase u, and it's not going to be optional. Same here. Now we have all the schema in place. Next, let's configure the Prisma auth provider. First, we are going to configure the auth contract. So, auth contract. Under the user provider, we are going to get rid of the database provider implementation and update it with the Prisma implementation. So, this will be Prisma auth provider contract. And that has been imported from the Prisma package. Then we'll pass to it the user model, which is the user model we just defined. This is coming from the Prisma client. Then we also need to update the config. So this will be Prisma auth provider config. Again, we'll pass the user model. Next, we need to update the auth config. The driver will remain the same, as well as the token provider. Since we are using Redis for that, inside the provider object is where we need to make the necessary changes. So the driver here is going to be Prisma. 
the identifier will remain the same the uid is going to remain the same also since we are now using the prisma of provider there is no user stable again so this will be model and to point to the user model so that is all the configuration and setting up we need to do now we can start making use of the user model and the off module so i'm going to create a new controller which i'm going to call auth controller then add the necessary routes routes post register auth controller register then another one for login let's start with the register method we to get request and auth from the context i won't be covering any validation in this tutorial so we'll just create the user Then the data is going to be name, which we will get from the request. Then the email. Then lastly, password, which we need to hash. First, let me pull in the hash module. Then await hash make. Then we'll pass in the password request input then password so this will create the user which you can save in a variable then we can log in the user using the auth module so await auth login now we'll pass the user object this will generate an api token which you can save in a variable and simply return the token let's start the server and let's try creating a user i'm going to create a new folder which i will call auth then inside it i will create the request for creating a user which i will call register uh, let me copy this slash register and this will be a post request So we have the name, let's say my name. And email address. Then a password, which is a very super strong password. Sorry, this should be in quotes. Then I can send the request. So a user has been created and this is the token just as we expect if we inspect the database we should see a new collection which is the user collection and a new document which is the user we just created next let's add the implementation for logging in Yeah, we are simply going to use the attempt method on the auth module. So await auth attempt. Then we'll pass in the email which we we'll get from the request. Then the password. This will generate a token. So let's save that in a variable. And return the token. Let's try it out. I'm going to duplicate this. And this will be login. This will be slash login. And this will only take the email and password. Let's try entering the wrong password. As you can see, we got an error that the password does not match. For security reasons, it's not advisable to display error message like this. So it's better to just display some generic message. So let's refactor this. So I'm going to wrap this inside the try cache. I'll grab all this and move it into the try block. Then inside the cache block, we can return response 
let's pull in response response unauthorized they will pass a generic message along the line of invalid credentials now if we resend this so the status has been set to 401 and with this message but if i enter the correct password i got the api token because my credentials are correct so that is how to log in now let's update the post route to require that a user is logged in before creating a post and for that we need to first register the auth middleware i'm only going to register the named middleware auth import app middleware auth then inside the route file we can apply the middleware to the post resource and we don't want to apply the middleware to all of them so i'm going to specify the ones i want to add the middleware to the first one will be for the store route so we apply the auth middleware then i'm going to duplicate it a couple of times so the other one will be the updates route then lastly the destroy route now if we head back to insomnia and try to create a post we should get an error so we got a 401 unauthorized error because we need to be logged in to create a post let me log in again and grab the token then in the post endpoints i'm going to apply auth which will be bearer token auth then i will paste the token here now if i send the request everything should be fine but it's not quite fine because the user id is null and that is because we've not updated the implementation for creating a post so let's do that so we're going to update the store method to include the user that creates the post so instead of doing this i'm going to refactor this to get the value individually that is i2 which we will get from request then this will be the content then for the user id we can get that from the auth first let's pull in auth then we can do auth user id then we'll do the same thing for the update method as well now if we try creating another record everything should now work as expected so that is how to use the Prisma Auth module for authentication in Adonis.